Still water range is a foot wall block of a normal fault, which is going up. The hang wall is the valley going down, and it dips to the east. As you come up to the Sioux Hills, the part that ruptured in 1954 came up through here and ended about, about in this area right here. And then this part of the fault hasn't ruptured historically. And when you come across the Sioux Hills, there are two things that happen. One is that the dip changes from east to west dipping <laughs> of the normal fault, and that west dip is distributed amongst a number of individual mapped faults through here, and then it is organized into a single big west dipping fault bounding the Tobin range over here. So the fault system transfers displacement by going like that through the Sioux Hills, and those west dipping faults um, extend far to the most western side of the Sioux Hills. The 1915 earthquake came ripping down the Tobin Range and went out through here, and then the scarps ended, and we'll look at the map in just a sec, and then they picked up on the west side of the Sioux Hills. So there is a, a fault segment boundary between here and here, just in terms of the map trace of the fault, which uh, probably, I would guess, merges at depth because the dip here is about a 45 to 50 degrees. And as I was saying on the map, I'll point it out, there's a, they, these, they went down into a mine shaft where they found the bedrock fault, and it dips 45 to 50 degrees to the west, and probably quite similar to what, what we saw over here as well. So the, the earthquake story is rupture, no rupture, and rupture. This is 1915, and this is 1954 with one little piece right in here that remains unslipped in the, in historic time. So these faults are west? These are all dipping west, oh. right down to here. This, this is coming east and west and joining each other. And I pointed this out in the car. This is complicated because I think the next fault over here, this goes like this. Right, but then back over here, there's another fault system on this side. Mm -hmm. But generally speaking, you can see the topography of the Stillwater Range <coughs> diminishes down to here. There's low distributed topography here, and then here. And then and one thing that we saw when we came up here is that, and we you can you can still get a sense of it is we're actually quite a bit higher up in this pleasant valley than over here in the Dixie Valley. So this is probably. Um, this structural barrier is also probably a topographic barrier that influences how much sediment moves up here in Pleasant Valley and, and keeps it from moving down into Dixie Valley, because all things being equal, I guess, and I haven't thought this out, you, you might expect that all the valleys ought to have roughly the same elevation. And if they have a big difference in elevation, one reason why they might have a difference in elevation is some kind of a control which makes sediment accumulate higher. Now, I don't know if that's necessarily true. You could also do the same thing by having more extension here, because obviously the valley is wider than it is up here. But the topography broadly mimics this displacement transfer thing that I'm saying, where you have a big high discrete range distributed, and then as you go north to the Tobin range, you can see you've got another big high range along there. And this is a story that Jane, that uh, this is this place has got some notoriety because it's a uh, it's a terrestrial transfer zone between two different fault systems that you can look at all kinds of things like structural linkage you can look at sediment dispersal patterns fall growth all this stuff and a guy named Mike Leader a British guy and James Jackson have done quite a bit of work looking at fault growth and their interaction with the depositional systems and you can we don't have we're not going to do it, but there's some really cool places where you can see fault tips going into the subsurface. That's okay. Fault tips going into the subsurface, but the landscape is elevated beyond where the fault tip is, argument being that there's, a, it, although we have a displacement gradient at the surface, the fault must persist and drive foot wall uplift, or, uh, uplift across it. Okay, so I'm going to just say the same thing again.